Amphibia has shown zero signs of slowing down with these recent episodes, and my god, I am totally for it. Matt and the crew have been killing it, man. Shout out to them for getting these episodes out during a pandemic. Per usual, Amphibia always airs two 15-minute episodes together to fill up the half-hour slot on Saturdays. This week's episodes were Quarrelers Pass and Toad Catcher. Quarrelers Pass was a solid episode for Sprig and Polly. It mainly focused on those two. It was one of those episodes where the two siblings are just constantly bickering because they're forced to be in the same place together, so Hop Out forces them to leave the cart so they can sort out the differences. After wandering around the mountain paths for a while, they encounter a pair of what looked like giant conjoined axolotl twins that wanted to eat them. However, these two began to bicker and fight the same way Sprig and Polly do, which inspired Sprig and Polly to put aside their differences for the rest of the trip so they could properly escape, as well as not annoy Hop Pop and Ann anymore. Hop Pop is also hilarious in this episode, hating awkward silence and forcing conversation with Ann about relationships. It was a solid episode, but for this video, I'm mainly wanting to focus on the second episode for this week, which was Toadcatcher. After over a year, we finally get to see Sasha and Grom again, fellas. I miss these guys so much. So if you've been keeping up with my Amphibia content for a while, you know I've speculated before that Sasha may have gotten amnesia after falling off Toad Tower, hence why she looked so villainous in promotional posters as well as in promos. You know, I thought because of her last words to Anne, she you know, wouldn't necessarily be acting this way? Well, this episode deconfirmed that mini-theory I had almost instantly. This episode starts off with a bit of a Sasha training montage. She's going through a obstacle-like area in a forest, jumping onto small stumps bit by bit, doing pull-ups, etc., ending the montage by destroying dummies she made of Anne and the Planter family. I really like the part where Sasha looks at the picture of herself, Anne and Marcy, and the wind blows the picture in a way where it covers up Anne with only Marcy and Sasha still being shown in the photo. I'd like to think that symbolizes Sasha not considering Anne a friend at all anymore. But I'm still faithful these two will make up before the show ends. You know, they gotta get home somehow. Sasha is, of course, still with Grime, but Grime has become a bit of a couch potato on top of being wanted by the Natopian Empire. He's been too depressed to do anything productive, so he just sits on his ass watching Suspicion Island. I love how both he and Hop Bob got completely addicted to that show. I always like the, you know, neat parallels between these two, even though there aren't that many to begin with. I guess. <laughs> Sasha even tries to have Percy and Braddock pose as bounty hunters to attack her in order to get Grime fired up for battle again, but it was no use. It's no use! Grime also points out that all of his soldiers besides Percy and Braddock abandoned him, which I find pretty interesting since he still had a whole squad with him at the end of Reunion. I'm guessing the rest of them just got scared of the Natopians coming after them, so they decided to play it safe and no longer associate themselves with Grime. And the pink newt from the promos slash season 2 poster also makes her debut during this episode. Her name is General Yunan, Scourge of the Sand Wars, defeater of Ragnar the Wretched, and the youngest newt to ever achieve the rank of general in the great Newtopian army. She introduces herself like that about five times this episode. It reminded me a lot of how Jesse and James of Team Rocket always, you know, do their prepare for trouble speech whenever they try to steal Pikachu from Ash. She's the newt that Newtopia sent after Grimes, so she asks frogs inside of a restaurant nearby if they've seen him. Of course, Percy and Braddock walk in talking about Grime, and Yunan overhears them. They, of course, lie about knowing where Grime is, but when they think Yunan left them alone, they begin talking about where he's located while she snuck back inside and clung to the ceiling of the restaurant. Yunan eventually confronts Grime, claiming she's here to take his head. Sasha points out she must not be very threatening because she has no army. I, I got chills when Yunan said she had an army once, but they slowed her down while slicing up the trees and the dummies of Anne and the Planter family, and the demonic look in her eyes, man, I, I really do like this character a lot so far. Sasha and Grime begin running away after that, I mean, who wouldn't? Sasha gets annoyed with how slow Grime is moving, claiming that if he trained with her once in a while, she he wouldn't be slowing her down like this. Grime, being the social genius that he is, sees through Sasha knowing the only reason she's training so much is so she can take her mind off of her broken friendship with Anne. She still can't get over the fact that Anne stood up there and that the things between them just won't be the same. The two of them reach a dead end on the path, and Grime insists Sasha abandons him to save herself, but she refuses. Another reason she's been training so hard is so she can protect Grime, since he's the only person she can rely on right now, and I, I like that a lot. You know, this, of course, motivates Grime to stand up to UNN with Sasha once she catches up to them. Grime gets knocked down pretty easily, but that's not really his fault, since the only thing he could use for a weapon was a tree branch. Can't use his tongue because she has Wolverine claws. Sasha put up a pretty solid fight, though, managing to break one of her Wolverine claws. The animation from their combat was really well done, too. I think the moving background is what made it feel that much more fluid. Just when Sasha 
Sasha thinks she's lost, though. She sets up Grime for a sneak attack by using Yunnan's own introduction speeds against her. Yunnan gets pushed off the cliff and is swept away by the river below. I'm sure that's not the last we'll see of her character. I like her a lot, man. I, I hope she allies herself with Anne to stop Grime and Sasha's plan to make a new army to storm the capital. The episode ends with Sasha looking into the sunset, saying she has her own path now, but her grudge against Anne isn't over. Not even close. Whew, man, I cannot wait to see those two rematch. But honestly, I really can't wait to see Marcy and Sasha interact with each other. I really want to know how that'll go down. I think this might be my favorite episode of the season so far. Real talk. The, the dynamic between Sasha and Grime may be my favorite in the whole series. Like, I, I love these two together. Plus, I think this episode kind of sets up how the season finale is going to play out. There's going to be a war in Utopia, fellas, and it's not going to be pretty. I guarantee you that. At this point, the only thing I still have no idea about is the robotic frog. I still have no clue how he's going to, you know, play into all this. You know, he might have that connection with the frog Grunkle stand due to the the identical symbols they wear, but that's all I can really think of. Time will tell, though. I think that just about does it for this video, though. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on this week's episodes, what you liked, didn't like, speculations for the future episodes, etc. I'd love to know your thoughts. Per usual, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like down below, and if you're new to the channel, subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. Peace out, take care, bye-bye.